stand in the order in which you spoke. Stay on this side. That's right. Yeah, we need a little more stage, huh? Okay. Less of us. Okay. Okay, what is this? Oh, whoa. Oh, let's not put yeah, it up. Yeah, we don't want to be Yeah, Congratulations. Well done. Fantastic. Thank well you done, very man. much for having fun with me. Look, it's for me. Rachel. Oh, yeah, I should have signed it in crayon. <laughs> Rachel, just so we can get to know you a little bit better than your color of blue, your favorite quote is, Don't give up, don't ever give up by Jimmy V. Is that Jimmy V? Is that basketball, Jimmy V? Okay, just wanted to be sure. Your hobbies, juvenile fiction. Oh, yes. What's your favorite on the crayon theme today, that works in pretty good. What's your favorite juvenile fiction? I absolutely love the author, Rick Riordan. He's the one who takes all the mythology and turns it into juvenile fiction. So you've got the kids of these gods, and they're trying to get through what all these other kids are getting through. Of course, in addition to that, they have to battle monsters and each other. So. <laughs> But I just absolutely love mythology as a child myself. So pulling it in there, I read those and I just zip through them and they're like, okay, I'm reading it again. And I start back at the beginning. Fantastic. And Rachel, you <laughs> Rachel is representing FedEx Toastmasters today. Yes. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, congratulations. So we can all get to know you a little bit better. A reminder, Dana's favorite color was yellow. And his favorite quote is against all odds. That's nice as well. Mm -hmm. One thing I was really interested in is one of your hobbies. Motorcycling sounds a little dangerous, but antiques sounds really interesting to me. What kind of antiques do you specialize in? Do you shop for them? Do you collect them? Do you just, do you have a lot of them at home? Well, Denise, uh, that's a great question to ask me because I have quite a few different types of antiques. I have an antique dining room suit that looks like something that you would find in an Ikea today. It's blonde oak. In fact, the very tie that I wear was made by my late grandmother, Cecilia Connell, in the year 1970. That's right. This is a 46-year-old tie that stood the test of time. <laughs> and that's a credit to my grandmother, who was a seamstress. She made very good stuff. And I also have antique coins, antique paper money. I once owned an antique automobile, a 1969 Chevrolet Corvair at one point. That's a whole different story with a whole set of uh, speech projects <laughs> in itself. But it runs the gamut. I have no specific part of antiques. I'm more of a generalist in that respect. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the next great antique. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have these certificates for second, third place? They're in my bag. Just dig through it, you'll find them. They're in a brown folder. <laughs> Michael, congratulations. I love crafts. Good, and unfortunately, Purple Rose is not in that little box. Oh. But Michael's reminder, Michael's color was Purple Rose. And also to get, Michael, get to know Michael a little bit better, Michael's quote today, is courage and cowardice. So 
the word? Yep. Courage and cowardice both get stronger the more they are used. Here we go. This is a new profile since Michael's last contest. I had the old profile, but he was sure to give me the new one. And this is a new quote from last time, so fantastic. I would have repeated the wrong one. One of your hobbies I thought was interesting is long drives, movies, long drives and movies. I think we would get to know you best by knowing what kind of movies you like. Oh, I, I love all sorts of movies. My absolute favorite are science fiction and fantasy movies. I love the sci-fi movies where there's somebody who thinks they're absolutely ordinary. They're kind of wasting away out somewhere in the desert. Somebody might recognize the ones that I'm going for. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the wizard shows up, and he's special, and he has to save the galaxy, and he gets to go out, and he has all the great powers of the universe, and all of a sudden, he's a great person. But the best movies are the ones where that person realizes before the end that they were the great person before they started. So those are my kind of type movies. And that kind of ties in with your what inspires you most. Yes. yes which much. is that moment when someone achieves something they did not think they could. Yes. I love what inspires me most, especially little kids. If anybody works with little kids and there's that one thing that they're afraid to do, like go swimming and diving off the, the swimming board, right? The diving board. And the kids are, mm, and they're like this. And that moment they jump in and they realize they could do it. And they could do it the whole time. And that pure joy that's on their face when it's like, I had that in me the whole time. I can do these things. They're in me. I can do it. And that moment when that switch gets turned is something that really jazzes me up. <laughs> Trevor, congratulations. Thank you. Trevor, you chose teal blue. Because you like the combo of it, I guess. Trevor's quote, we cannot achieve our wildest dreams by remaining who we are. <laughs> that kind of goes with the combination of the teal blue. You gotta, you gotta bring everything together. One of your hobbies is hiking. And then I want to talk about your wife and your impersonations of her. And <laughs> <laughs> but first we'll talk about your hiking. Where is the most interesting, dangerous place that you've hiked? One year for spring break, instead of going south, I went north. I worked for Eastern Mountain Sports, and we went up to Mount Washington in New Hampshire, which is one of the highest peaks on the east coast. So instead of being down in the sunny Florida, we were in 18 below weather. Fortunately, we had experienced guides with us, and working for Eastern Mountain Sports, we had all the gear we needed. But that is an experience I will never forget, because you truly have to work as a team and make sure that you know what you're doing every step of the way as you're going up the side of that mountain. That's I'd say so. In your humor speech today, you did quite a few impersonations of your wife. Yes. Does, she, do you, does she know you do them? <laughs> All the time like that in front of 129 people? My well, when I was practicing the speech a few times, she's like, you're really going to say that? <laughs> and I said, after 20 years, she's like, oh, yes. Fine. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, had it, you have it down pretty well, I'd say. Yes. And she'd be proud of, I think she'd be proud of your impersonation. So thank you very much. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Lamar, congratulations. Thank you. Lamar chose Brown. Quite an inspiration, I think you are, for your children as well. Lamar's quote is, life is the best form of entertainment. <laughs> and I, think, I think we learned that about you today. One of your hobbies is, this is fascinating, sign language. Yes. Do you want a sign language, something for us? Like, um, what was that? What would you like? He's turning the tables on me. I am now the contestant, and he is now in charge. Let's Maybe I can teach you a little bit of sign language. That would be perfect. I would love that. I would love that. 
And how long have you been signing? And do you do it? Do you do it for functions? Do you do it for events? Are you hired? So one of my, one of the things I focus on in my icebreaker is the fact that sign language is actually my first language. Ooh. And the reason for that is because I'm the child of four. Well, I'm the baby of, and my sisters are older. But the nearest sister, older, older to me, is about six years older than me, and she's completely deaf. She got pneumonia in her ears when she was a baby and lost her hearing. And so she was also my babysitter. She loves babies. She happens to have six children and 14 grandchildren, so she loves babies. Um, but children, when they're born, can sign before they can speak. The American language, English language, is very complex and convoluted and difficult. They switch backs and synonyms. Sign language doesn't have synonyms at all. So as soon as they can get hand-eye coordination, a child can communicate with its mother. I could communicate with my sister, and my sister could sort of communicate with my mother, right? And so that was my first language, and then I learned English. Anybody who knows me knows that I kind of get to the point, I kind of drive through the point, and then drive over the point. <laughs> so Toastmasters has also helped me grow in, in a lot of different ways by speaking similar to the way that I think, which is very straightforward. Let's get from here to there as quickly as possible. Very interesting. Joseph, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, so your color was blue, and I want to thank you for sharing your story. That was very, very nice of you. Your quote, if it hurts, run faster. <laughs> Is someone chasing you? That was a quote from his high school cross-country coach. And uh, though Joe says the coach claimed to never have said that. He <laughs> claims that, but we all heard him say it. Okay, all right, so that stuck that, with you for... Yes. That stuck with you for a long time, huh? Yes. <laughs> Just because it's... When we heard it, it was funny at the time. Mm -hmm. We knew he was saying it in jest, but it actually has a practical meaning to us that if things are tough, you've still got to power through it. You know, synonym, you know, if the going gets tough, the tough gets sure. going. And that one just sort of embedded in my head. And if something is really tough for me to do, I think of that. It brings a smile to my face and makes it easier to do it. Fantastic. I think the only place that might not work is with shoes. <laughs> should just take them off. I don't know. In my world, that's my, that's my quote. <laughs> On your hobbies, uh, one that I found was interesting because I'm a Pinterest kind of person was DIY projects. We all have those, for better or for worse. What is a DIY success and what is a DIY failure? failure of yours. You can do them in any order, or you might, have, might want to share two failures, whatever you like. <laughs> Whichever is... I like to focus on the successes. Perfect. So I'll, I'll think of the failures I'm talking. Toastmaster but all the way. I apparently like to remodel bathrooms because I've done four bathrooms in my life. Two in my previous house and two in the current house. The two in the current house were by necessity because there were some plumbing issues and when we ripped some things out, we said, well, why don't we keep going and keep going and keep going? You know, the failure part is when you start a project like that, not realizing how big of a project it is, and it takes two years without a master bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little unnerving and pressure-filled at the end. <laughs> I'm sure for, for everybody, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pressure was on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. And Bobby Blue Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Your favorite quote, Bobby Blue Eyes, is carpe diem. What do you... Well, how do you use that in your daily life? As many of you know, carpe diem means seize the day. I try to use that mantra every morning when I get up 
but usually by the time I get to my desk at work, I've already ruined that for the day. <laughs> Long story short, I, back in my ninth grade health class, I expected to go in and learn all the standard things you learn in health class. I was surprised when my health teacher actually did a full semester on, now the movie is uh, drawing a blank on it, Robin Williams, Thank the guest participation, Dead Poet Society, Dead Poet Society. Dead Thank Dead you. Yeah. interactive answers here, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I really became fond of the phrase and continue to use it as my quote to this day. So Carpe Diem, did you say that today when you got up? Mm, or did you say, oh, oh my gosh? No, I was, well, I was saying it until I got to that door. <laughs> <laughs> carpe diem, carpe diem. Just keep saying that to yourself, right? And uh, that and uh, the Eye of the Tiger song will do you, do you good. <laughs> One of your hobbies, which is um, admirable, is community service. What is your, how would you inspire us? to participate in community service in our neighborhood? Uh, yeah, I think everyone has to have their own individual cause, and that's really where the community service comes from. Because when you're passionate about something, that's when you're really getting the most out of the situation. <laughs> Last weekend, uh, one of my neighbors was walking by, and she said, hey, I looked over, and she was painting these pink arrows on the street. And I went, Jen, what are you doing? She said, you didn't hear about Addie's dolls? I'm like, Addie's dolls are going past the house? It was her daughter ran a 5K in our town for a girl she never met in Dubois that had cancer. And it was just amazing to me that a little elementary school age girl would do that. So I just, I, my advice is anything that you're passionate or have a strong feeling for, that's what you want to go after. Thank you. Pictures right now while we're up here, all up here, and have a few minutes would be great. We can fill up that time. The girl. I don't need to be in this.